Okay, for the first time ever, ever in its history, Black Rock City is at capacity. This event has been growing phenomenally for years, and now we've hit a point where it can't grow as fast anymore. So that growth has to slow. We are all very, very lucky to be here. I feel like a sense of gratitude at everything you've all done and the fact that I'm here. But the fact is, is that for every new person that comes, it's likely that one of us won't be able to get here anymore. So we have to start to think about turning it around and focusing outward and focusing our energy in other directions. And if you look around the room here and you look out at Black Rock City, you'll see that many of us look the same. Many of us are white people. And not everyone, just many of us, most of us, the majority. And so we need to start to look outward and put our energy outward to bring those people in. And I would love to invite them all to come here. I would love to invite the 6,999,950,000 people who aren't here to come here, but they won't fit. So we have to start doing more things out there that are like this here. And we have to start sharing what we've learned at Burning Man with the people out there. And something I've learned that I want to talk about for a few minutes is participation. Black Rock City taught me that you get out of it what you put into it. Actually, the harder you work, the more you devote yourself heart and soul to what you do, the greater the rewards will be. You'll learn more, you'll, get, you'll, you'll feel better, you'll, you'll build community, you'll be rewarded. And we need to keep, keep bring that lesson home with us to our real homes in the default world. Because, especially in America, but elsewhere in the world, people don't know this. People feel like they can't participate. They don't have access to make change in the world around them, right? Their government is broken. All you can do is vote and complain. That's all you can do. We don't trust corporations. They don't have our best interests at heart. Even the church, we, many of us feel like the church doesn't serve us any longer. So we have to start building our local communities in a way that can serve us. So all of that is why in 2007, a group of us in New York got together and started a thing called Figment. And Figment is a free participatory arts event based on Burning Man principles that we did on a place called Governor's Island in New York City. It started because there was this new public place in New York called Governor's Island that, uh, that was a, a former military base, the former army base that defended New York for 200 years. It was, an, it was a key uh, government, military, army asset in every major conflict that the, that the United States had from the Revolutionary War through at least World War II. And in the 60s, it became a Coast Guard base. And, in, and then in the 90s, it started to be decommissioned under the Clinton administration. And in 2003, it was turned over to New York City, 172 acres of basically virgin real estate in one of the most difficult, most expensive real estate markets in the world. And we saw this. And an, an added challenge, an added issue here, is that when the government gave it to New York City, they said, you know what? You can't put condos here. You can't put apartments here. No one can live here. This place has to be held for the public. This has to be a place that everyone has access to. So we, we looked at this. And I went to the guidelines for the first time in 2005, and I was blown away by, uh, by just you know, the, the history, the incredible history, the Wright brothers for their first flight, flight over open water from this island. I mean, Columbia students built the first fort on the island. It's just amazing. Um, but it needed some, it, but nobody knew what to do with it because you couldn't put condos there, which is the first thing you do as a real estate developer. So we, rec we recognized pretty quickly that, that art could provide a sense of mission for this place, specifically participatory art, like we've seen and learned from Black Rock City. So we started talking to the island and working with them. And we told them, let's, well, let's, we told them, let's do a one-day arts event. And uh, we said, we'll have 200 to 500 people there. And along the way, the name Figment, we, we needed a name for this. So the name Figment popped into my head. And um, Figment came from Andy Warhol. Somebody once asked Andy Warhol, um, what would you like on your gravestone? And he said, I'd like to be blank, no epitaph at all. No, wait, I'd like to have one word on it, Figment. And so by picking that name for our event, we weren't just saying, this is an ephemeral thing that's here and goes away. We were also saying, this links, this is art. This links back to the history of art in America and in New York specifically. And more than that, Fig, what, Fig, what Warhol was saying about Figment is that we're all created by those around us. We aren't just independent people. We're all images. 
we're all references. We all exist in, collabor in, in a collaborative environment naturally, and you can't get away from that. No person is an island. We're all in it together. And so we, and so we started, and we got a lot of some early press for our first event, and we told the island 500 people, as I said, would come, and it turned out 5,000 showed up. And, and uh, the island was just, just opened, and that was the most people they had ever had since it was a Coast Guard base, and so they freaked out. And they shut the ferries down, you couldn't, nobody could come anymore, and so we turned about 2,000 people away, and about 2,600 people made it out to the island for this event in 2007. And they, they, they were anticipating a PR problem, because they thought, you know, uh, it's a public place, and we're turning people away. But no PR problem happened, and we developed a, and, and the, the island said to us, you know, where did you guys come from? <laughs> and like, when are you doing this again? And so we developed a very close relationship with the island, and have, have done, uh, we just had our fifth Figment event in New York City in 2011, <laughs> with about 20,000 participants, 400 art projects, a team of 300 volunteers, um, and along the way, we recognize this island isn't just great for a one-day event, it's also a, a weekend-long event this year. Uh, it's also a great place for public art because it's only open four months out of the year, it's only open three days a week during those four months, and it closes at night. So you don't have any too many security issues with the art. You can put stuff there, and it's relatively safe overnight. So we've since started a sculpture garden of interactive sculpture, uh, an artist-designed mini golf course that we rebuild every year, and, and for the last two years, we have a pavilion on the island that's designed by architects through a design competition. Um, and those projects are visited by about 200, 200 to 300,000 people for the last couple of years. So we're engaging those people at a smaller level of participation at those numbers. Then in 2009, we started hearing, we were getting the word out, and we started hearing from other cities that they'd be interested in doing Figment-style events there. So we, um, Boston was our first, the first city we produced another Figment event in. In, in 2010, they had about 5,000 people come out, about 100 art projects. They repeated it in 2011. In 2011, we added Jackson, Mississippi, and Detroit, Michigan which people sort of look at me and say, well, why those two cities? Why not Chicago? Why not San Francisco? It's like, we're, if we're about inclusion as one of our fundamental principles, what better way to demonstrate that inclusion than by going to places other than the prosperous coasts or the, just the big cities? Why not go to a place like Jackson or Detroit, places that are shrinking, places with a large minority population, places that really need what I think we have to teach that we've learned? So what's special about Figment? Um, it's, it's a couple of things. It's free. We don't want to create barriers to entry for people because we don't want to force people to make a choice. People at lower income levels have a choice between eating today and coming to our event. Um, because of that, it's tremendously diverse. The population in New York City looks, uh, Figment in New York City looks like New York City. And obviously in Detroit and Jackson, we're in a very diverse population because those urban cores have a lot of minority, a large minority population. We get a lot of children at the event. What we've learned, though, through it's free, is because it's, so it's funded by grants, by grants and donations, and um, so we've learned to make it scalable. We have no advertising and no um, no corporate sponsorship, sponsorships. We've learned to make the event scalable, and really, we can create a Figment event with any number of people who come forward and say, "I want to do this," and we have X. We have X amount of money. We have X amount of resources. We can do this. So we've really learned to do that well. And so it's really about people coming out with their passions and sharing with the world and with their communities. What else is special about it is we partner with government organizations. So instead of having an, it, this is an underground arts event where we hope we don't get arrested. This is a totally legal, mostly daytime event, where. Um, where we're partnering with the government to meet their objectives for what they want to see happen with Figment. If they are interested in economic development, we can help bring attention to an undeveloped area. We can help re reinvigorate public space. We can help create a collaborative, creative community together that, that helps to create vibrancy in a given city. So what's next? Figment's growing. Um, it'll, it'll probably be more cities in 2012. We're working on that now. Um, we're hoping it gets a, bigger in a manageable way. But I want to challenge all of you to really think about how you bring what you've learned from Black Rock City home and collaborate with the people there to create great things that, at home using participation, using participatory art to make a statement and make a difference in your communities. Because if we just think about it, if everybody who's here, who's here in Black Rock City, took 25% of the energy they put into the amazing things that are here and to put that energy in their homes, 
just think about what we could accomplish. We could transform this, our communities, our country, the planet, and you don't need a lot of money to do it. All you need is your commitment, your heart and soul, and your energy. Thank you.